Welcome to B News Weekly. I'm Brad Bond in for Phil Gallagher. To the news. The Burlington Police Department arrested two in connection with a residential breaking and entering in the early morning on Saturday. Chief Michael Kent reported in a press release. Uh, Ronald Lamar Harvey, 23 of Holbrook, is charged with breaking and entering as well as destruction of property. A 16-year-old juvenile male of Braintree is charged with breaking and entering at night placing person in fear and uh, destruction of property as well. According to police, at approximately 12.50 a.m. on Saturday, August 20th, Burlington Police were dispatched to a residence on Westwood Street for a report of a breaking and entering in progress. The homeowners woke up to loud banging noises coming from the front door, the release states. Uh, one of the residents got up to investigate and saw that the locked front door had been kicked in and two males were running from the home. Moments later, dis dispatch notified police that a Burlington resident reported that they had just been attacked on Westwood Street and the suspects were currently operating a white Cherokee, a, a white Jeep Cherokee close by on Michael Drive. Officers arrived at the scene and apprehended Harvey and the 16 year old juvenile, as well as a female party who was driving the Jeep. The female party was in the area to meet the Burlington resident who she met online. The two allegedly had an altercation and the Burlington resident called police while the female party called Harvey and the 16 year old juvenile who were traveling with her. After an initial investigation, which included interviews with the homeowners on Westwood Street, police determined that Harvey and the 16-year-old juvenile had allegedly mistakenly broken into the residence on Westwood Street while looking for the female party who they thought was inside the house. The two were taken into, a, into custody without incident. incident. Uh, Harvey is uh, being held on $2,540 bail at the Burlington Police Station pending his arraignment at Woburn District Court. The 16-year-old juvenile was released to the custody of his sister. These are allegations. All suspects are considered innocent until proven guilty. Well, the Burlington Police Department is asking the public's assistance in identifying and locating a female suspected uh, for alleged shoplifting. According to the police information website massmostwanted.org, the suspect pictured here allegedly stole four pairs of sunglasses with a total value of $640 from Lord & Taylor in the Burlington Mall on August 16. Uh, police say she then fled the area in what appeared to be a black Honda Pilot with Massachusetts license plates. The car was driven by a second unknown party. The suspect is described as a female with a medium build, short stature, and a medium complexion. Anyone with information is encouraged to call the Burlington Police Department at 781-272-1212. And a nurse was arraigned in court last week on allegations she illegally obtained opioid medications from a number of area pharmacies, including one or more in Burlington. Middlesex County District Attorney Marion Ryan announced in a release that Marjorie Taylor, 29 of Wilmington, was arraigned in Middlesex Superior Court and charged with 35 counts of uttering a false prescription for a controlled substance in connection with an alleged scheme to fraudulently obtain prescribed opioid medications. The defendant was released on personal recognizance. The next scheduled hearing in this case is September 2, 2016. District Attorney Ryan said the defendant allegedly used her medical knowledge uh, to write convincing prescriptions for herself and her family members for opioids she would otherwise not be able to obtain. Authorities say that from May of 2015 to August of the same year, the defendant, a registered nurse, is alleged to have used a physician's prescription pad that did not belong to her to fill 35 forged prescriptions for thousands of painkillers, including oxycodone, hydrocodone, hydromorphane, and tramadol. The prescription pad was obtained uh, while the defendant was being seen as a patient by a Boston physician and not through her role as a registered nurse. The prescriptions, which were written in the defendant's name and the names of relatives of the defendant, were allegedly filled at pharmacies in Burlington, Lowell, Reading, Stoneham, Tewkesbury, Wilmington, and Woburn. These charges are allegations and the defendant is presumed innocent until proven guilty. And more from the police. The police, Burlington Police Department is warning residents to be aware of a scam reported in town last month that had a mother and a son both believing the other had been kidnapped and held for ransom last week. Chief Michael Kent said that on Wednesday, August 17th, just before 4 p.m., a local woman arrived at the police station claiming that a kidnapper had called her demanding ransom money for her son. Police were able to ping the son's cell phone uh, to Bill Ricca, where Bill Ricca police uh, aided in confirming his safety. 
Police say that upon speaking with the son, they learned the callers also attempted to scam him, leading him to believe that his mother had been taken hostage. The callers apparently recorded both voices and played them back to the other party to verify their claim. The son did wire transfer, wire transfer money to the callers. After learning he was scammed, the son attempted to cancel the transaction. In an attempt to buy time, the scammers reported a false weapons threat at the money transfer location so that the victim could not stop the transfer. Police believe that scammers identified the two involved parties as mother and son through personal information on social media accounts. The Burlington Police said anyone who receives a call from someone claiming to have kidnapped a family member or loved one should not panic, but instead think through the situation. First, keep calm and think. Kidnapping is a difficult crime to execute and is not common in Burlington or surrounding areas. Next, contact friends and relatives to check the story and then call the police. You can also try to get more information from the callers by asking to speak to your loved one. Finally, never send money overseas. And we've got a report now from uh, Leahy Hospital and Medical Center recently hosted Paint Fest America for a painting event with cancer patients and their families. V News reporter Robert Paris was there and has this report. Everyone can find peace within a painting. That was behind the Paint Fest held at Leahy Hospital and Medical Center last week. This nationwide tour engages local cancer communities in the healing power of art. Many cancer patients and survivors were there along with their family members to paint colorful murals. Dr. Linda Weller Ferris, Vice President of the Leahy Health Cancer Institute, told B News how this event came about and why Leahy has decided to be part of Paint Fest this year. So we have a relationship with the Foundation for Hospital Art. Uh, it's a national not-for-profit organization that tries to bring art into hospital settings where cancer patients are being treated. And it really is trying to promote a healing environment for cancer patients and their caregivers and their family members. So we were asked as the only site in the state of Massachusetts to sponsor this event. So this is the first time we were ever uh, selected to do Paint Fest. Uh, I am extremely proud. It, why did we select it? We selected it because we view it as central to our cancer survivors and our family members that they have a, a healing environment. We were thrilled that we could represent the state of Massachusetts nationally. And, um, you know, it's our general commitment to patients and our community. It's all about patients and families and their communities. Dr. Ferris talked about how patients benefit through their paintings. Patients actually enjoy um, different um, artistic expression. A, first they get to paint, so we have many, many survivors and patients who are currently under treatment painting the panels today, but really they, when they're undergoing treatment, they want to take their minds off of it, like a massage or pet therapy. We have pet therapy dogs, but beautiful artwork really does help to take a person out of the here and now and really think about something beautiful and healing. And so hopefully these patients are going to experience a, a more healing environment as a result of this event. Michael Tui, a cancer survivor and an artist from New Hampshire, took time to tell B News his story and commented on the experience with Paint Fest. The cancer was a uh... I basically woke up in the middle of the night, uh, had a pain in my left flank, went to a local hospital where I live. Um, they couldn't figure out what it was. They sent me down here, um, and I met with Dr. Libertino, who's an absolute genius. Um, so the, the long and the short of it is, is they ended up removing um, a kidney and some of the other urinary tract stuff. Um, then I went through chemotherapy, and now I'm on a maintenance program where I have immunotherapy um, every couple of months or so. As far as the art, I'm a working artist, you know. Um, I'm a contemporary artist in the sense that I do mostly um, along the lines of, say, pop, but it has a, a, a heavier look to it. So to me, at least, art has more to do with what you can bring out in other people. Yeah, the, the painting process or the creative process is really heal healing for the individual, but um, I think more importantly, for the person viewing the artwork, if they can identify with it, maybe they can find solace in it. Maybe it can bring them to a place where um, they can find some peace. Or maybe it can make them feel like they're part of a bigger picture. But it's a great event. Uh, one of the problems with cancer is, is that uh, a lot of times people feel like they're alone. 
you know, you're, you can have, um, you know, people look at you a little differently. Uh, people are afraid to say certain things in front of you um, and all that kind of stuff. So being surrounded with people who are in the same situation, roughly, it can be kind of comforting. Scott Fight, executive director of the Foundation for the Hospital Art, had a minute to discuss the goal of the event and explain the mural unveiling in New York. Our organization is the Foundation for Hospital Art, but our national tour is called Paint Fest America, and we're bringing cancer patients and cancer survivors together in all 50 states. Our goal is to kind of build upon the community that's been built here with their care by using art as in a way of expression, uh, bringing the survivors and the patients together. It gives them hope and encouragement. And then ultimately, all the murals that we do are going to be donated here. So we have one mural, it's called Our Stars of Hope, and we're doing a single panel in all 50 states. And so cancer patients and cancer survivors are lending a hand to that specific panel in each state. And so each panel has their state bird and flower. And so we have the chickadee and the mayflower here for Massachusetts, and that'll go, it's part of that mural, and then it'll be uh, assembled and unveiled in New York City next Tuesday on the final day of the national tour. From down here at Leahy Hospital, I'm Robert Paris for B News Weekly. Wow, what, what a great thing. Thank you very much, Robert. Uh, the, the Burlington Cable Access Television Studio has had many special programs produced within its walls throughout the years. Recently, producer Sandra Voltero joined this prestigious list with her program Be Prepared, videoing two episodes where they take a look at domestic violence to coincide with Domestic Violence Awareness Month 2016 coming up this October. Let's take a look. This October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month 2016. It was chosen as such to help focus in on the problem that continues to persist in our towns, our state, and across this country. Be Prepared is a television show locally produced here at BCAT. It is produced by Sandra Voltero of the Burlington Volunteer Reserve Corps. It examines and discusses different things involving the BVRC, medicine, and health care. These two things will be coming together as Sandra has decided to focus the October and November episodes of her show on the subject of domestic violence. Yes, the show's about looking at domestic violence here in the United States and Massachusetts, and we talk a lot about what is domestic violence and uh, all the ways that we can help people that are involved in a violent situation. In order to do so, she assembled a panel of experts. Well, we do a lot of work in the community. Um, we do a lot of work both with Burlington Police Department, with REACH, and with Leahy Clinic. So this was a great fit and an opportunity to really explain to people that coordinated approach. I was contacted by Sandra, the uh, host, and she, was a, uh, she came to our community policing uh, class years ago. And she since has gotten the show and wanted us to come in and, and talk about uh, the domestic violence issue in and around Burlington. Well, a colleague of mine was attending the Burlington Health Fair representing our organization and doing outreach to the community mm -hmm. and met Sandra, who invited us to come, and we were delighted to do it. They asked me because I've been active with the Domestic Violence Initiative at Leahy Hospital and Medical Center um, well over 20 years now. On the October and November shows, the panel will be discussing a variety of subjects. This includes programs that the Middlesex DA's office has instituted to help stop domestic violence. For instance, we brought to Middlesex County a program called Cut It Out, which was a real grassroots program that really is based on the idea that very often individuals, particularly women, will tell their hairdresser mm -hmm. things that they won't tell anyone else, or a hairdresser may notice bruises or missing hair, things mm -hmm. like that. The panel also went over the importance of education in dealing with the problem. I think the education that is out there um, at this point in the schools, um, we have a uh, partnership with REACH, a nonprofit domestic violence agency that they do a lot of outreach, not only to the schools, but to the, to the general public. And I think uh, and a, a, DA Ryan also has many programs and I think people are becoming more educated and they're learning what their options are. Another thing discussed on the show, which is exemplified by the show itself, is the coordination of different groups and offices working together to prevent domestic violence. 
so that ultimately survivors are getting the best support they can from anybody that they connect with. I think clearly there's an amazing safety net in Massachusetts of organizations and various systems that people might come into contact with. And sometimes they'll only come into contact with one of us, but the fact that we're all aware really helps so that if someone is coming to the police, because I think I'm, I need help, I need to go to the police, but the police aren't able to assist them with housing or other right. issues, right. then they know they can call us and it's not a, it's not a cold call, it's a warm handoff to mm -hmm. a community resource that they're aware of. The show also wanted to share a message of hope for those affected by the violence in their home. And I also think it's important for people to know that everybody can make a difference in someone's life in terms of they're dealing with the effects of domestic violence, thinking about making a change and actually making a change to have a healthier, safer life. Domestic Violence Awareness episodes of Be Prepared will be airing in October and November here on Burlington Cable Access Television on the Public Channel. They will also be available online. Please go to www.bcattv.org for showtimes and links. I'd just like to say that Be Prepared is bringing you shows about health, wellness, and safety every month. And we hope that you'll all tune in because we have a lot of interesting information and a lot of interesting and important guests on our shows. Thank you, Sandra. And also thank you to your panelists. From the set of Be Prepared, this is Corey McNeil reporting for B News Weekly. Back to you in the studio. Wow, thank you, Corey. We'll keep an eye out for the show. Well, on Tuesday, the school committee was given the details of a new security protocol that will be put in place for all the schools this year. Superintendent Eric Conti, Burlington Police Chief Michael Kent, and Police Sergeant Tim McDonough outlined the new program, which they learned this summer at a security conference for police departments and school departments at Columbine High School in Colorado. Two members of the school department were also in attendance and are now certified to help teach the measures to other members of the faculty and staff. The big changes are that the new security protocols are based on simple instructions and open communication. Conti said that in the past, the alerts for things such as lockdown were coded and had to be led by people who knew the details. Now, however, that type of thinking is no longer recommended. The new system has four different actions, lockdown, lockout, evacuate, and shelter, and clear instructions for each will be posted in every room of the schools as well as at the police station. Now, if an emergency occurs and an order to take action is given, everyone can quickly be on the same page and know what to do. This also, cover, this also helps cover situations when someone who would not previously be informed of the security measures, such as a substitute teacher, by having all directions readily available. Members of the school committee expressed approval of the new protocols and commended the police department for working so closely with the town's schools. And visitors to 3rd Avenue will likely have noticed the large apartment building erected on the hill above the development and work being done on another building in the same area. B News Director Rich Hosford went to check out the project and has this report. Northwest Park, home of the 3rd Ave development, is now more than just a destination for shoppers and diners. It now features a 180-unit multifamily apartment complex known as the Tremont. The building is of modern design and features a long list of amenities for those who choose to live there. To find out more, I spoke with Norblum's Todd Fremont Smith, who has been heading up the Northwest Project. I started by asking him about the atmosphere of the building. We designed this building to feel sort of like a boutique hotel. So when you come in, you'll pass by the, the entry desk where the, our staff will greet you. You'll pass beyond that into sort of a breakfast cafe nook. And beyond that, there's a community table where we do wine tastings and uh, sort of uh, reception re receptions uh, for our tenants and out that back window you'll see the swimming pool uh, walking further through the building you'd pass by the uh, in-house fitness center um, and then you'd proceed up the up into the into the sort of tenant entry portion of the building and pick up your mail and take the elevator up to your unit he also spoke about the choice of design for both the building and the units, which are mostly one and two bedrooms with a few three bedroom apartments available and range from $2,200 for a one bedroom unit to $2,600 for a two bedroom. Well, the whole idea here is to create not just another sort of peaked roof uh, suburban style apartment complex, but it was to create more of an, uh, an urban fringe, uh, you know, Cambridge type feel so the building is a flat roof the building is a very modern design architecturally and uh, the units themselves also are very efficient and very modern so when you enter the unit you'll see that we've used all solid surface countertops we've used very uh, uh, 
color coordinated cabinets with soft closes. We've, we've got stainless steel appliances. We paid particular, particular attention to closet space. That seems to be a big deal for people. So we've got very large walk-in closets. We've got walk-in showers with glass doors. And I think just generally speaking, it's a very modern presentation, a very contemporary uh, lifestyle. I asked him who the apartments complex target audience is and what about living in a mixed-use project appeals to them. We're seeing you know, a, a real draw from empty nesters, a real draw from the sort of corporate work, workforce in Burlington. Um, Leahy, Hanscom, the bigger tenants like Oracle and Keurig. Um, and there's just something magical about living and working in a mixed-use environment, being able to step out your door in the morning and go to work without facing an hour-long commute, and then coming home at night and having all the services and amenities at Third Avenue, whether it's Wegmans or going up down for a beer at Tony C's. Um, everything is here at Third Avenue, and the housing really resonates with what's going on down at Third Avenue in a very powerful way. Fremont Smith said the building also features communal areas where people can gather, both in the first floor sitting and billiards area and what is known as the Sky Lounge up on the fourth floor. Right, well, in, in an effort to sort of provide that third space in the building when you get sick of being in your unit at night and you don't want to come downstairs and play pool down here or go for a swim in the pool, we have what we call the Sky Lounge, which is up on the top floor, and it kind of overlooks Third Avenue. So we have an indoor-outdoor fireplace. We have a big TV set that's being installed to watch the football game. It's a place where you can go up, maybe uh, have a beer with friends, and hang out at night in a place that's not your unit. And it was also, I think, an attempt to democratize some of the best space in the building, to take some of that penthouse area in the building and, uh, and make that available for everyone in the building. There are also places outside for people to sit quietly or to gather with friends. Yeah, the grounds are very important. Nor Northwest Park has always been proud of its landscaping. And the way that this building laid out, we, we were able to create two separate courtyards. One is sort of a contemplative, quiet courtyard with flowers and a gas fire pit that you can come out at night and sit around, sit around and read a book. And the other courtyard is, is more of an active courtyard where uh, we have a swimming pool, gas uh, fireplaces where you can grill at night with your friends. And there's a little bit more noise typically over there, a little more action. So we've tried to create different types of spaces for different types of people, different types of moods, uh, but they've all been very successful. And both courtyards are self-facing, so they get lots of sun. And uh, they're immediately adjacent to, and they're really private areas intended for the use of the residents of the building. There is also another apartment complex yet to be named that will have 120 units and will be open in about 16 months. I asked him if there were any plans for future projects beyond the 300 units already built or under construction. Well, we do like the idea of creating a neighborhood here and there are some older buildings across the street from the Tremont which uh, we don't have permission to build housing yet but I, when we originally went to town meeting we had asked for something like 1,200 units of housing, which is what we thought we needed to create this mixed-use environment. The town meeting gave us 300 initially, but they did invite me to come back at some point in the future if we thought that more units would create a better neighborhood. And we think, not right now, we have another building already under construction, but maybe in a couple of years I might venture back to town meeting to see how they feel about maybe a third building, a third and final building. At the Tremont, I'm B News Director Rich Hosper. Wow, thank you, Rich. Very interesting project. Uh, we go now to B News meteorologist Peter Brown for a look at this week's forecast. We'll also check out the community calendar with Ian Cassiola to see what's happening in Burlington. Well, hello, hello everyone. This is Peter Brown with a look at your weather for the upcoming period. And look at this starting at our period on Thursday, August 25th. Look at this temperature, still above normal. That's definitely nothing that we haven't seen already this August, that's for sure. As you can see, as we get to the end of the period, look at this, August 31st already. Actually, by the time we get to the end of the period, August 31st is the last day of meteorological summer. So, I know, where did this summer go? That's for sure, and you can definitely notice that by how short the days have gotten are. Sun is actually rising now after 6 o'clock in the morning and setting at 7.30, so the days are definitely shortening up as we get towards fall. But as we move ahead, I'm going to show you a little bit about what's going to be going on with our weather for the next few days. And unfortunately for all of you that need water for your gardens and everything, uh, it doesn't look very good right now. As you can see here, we're going to have a series of high pressure centers that are going to move basically just due west to east across southern Canada. And that's going to keep us for a couple of days in a row. You'll have some warm days, then you'll have a little bit of a cool down as the high passes by us and we get more of an onshore breeze. But unfortunately, 
all of these fair weather pressure cells moving by us means we're only going to have a few clouds each day. This looks like it could even be one of the most driest weeks um, of the summer. So unfortunately, not good news there. And as we move ahead, I'm going to show you a little bit about what's going on in the tropics right now. You may have recently heard we actually have a lot of stuff going on in the Atlantic right now. You can see right here, Fiona has actually dissipated now. That's really not a concern at all for anyone in the Caribbean or the Atlantic. Gaston, way out here in the eastern Atlantic, that's going to head up east of Bermuda and into the central Atlantic and out to sea towards Europe. This little blob down here that you see east of the Caribbean, this is going to be something we might be watching um, for actually the next seven to ten days. We think that that's going to start moving its way towards Florida. And there is the potential that maybe by the end of next week into Labor Day weekend, I know unfortunately it'll be the holiday weekend, but getting into that time frame, we might see some precipitation from this storm make it all the way up the coast from Florida. So that's something to definitely look forward to because we need rain desperately here in the Burlington area, that's for sure. But as we move ahead, I'm going to show you the seven-day forecast. And basically, really what you see is what you get for the next seven days. Look at this. There's really no variance here, any days. Temperature is basically a little bit above normal from the low to mid 80s and just pretty much sun with a few clouds splashed in there all the way across the board. And on Friday morning, it's going to be very warm morning and I hope you get a chance to come to the Burlington Common and meet us for the zip trip with Fox 25 that we'll be doing. So I hope we see you on Friday. It's going to be another beautiful but very dry and warm day, that's for sure. So folks, I hope you can get out there and enjoy these last few days that we have of summer coming up and have a great weekend and a great week ahead. Hello and welcome to your community calendar. Parents, do your children like stories with dragons in them? On Tuesday, August 30th at 10.30 a.m., the Barnes & Noble in Burlington is having a storytime event featuring the book The Extremely Greedy Dragon by Jessica Barra. In the book, a girl named Georgie is fearless and not afraid of anything. When the village of Little Chitting has a dragon sleeping on the town's train tracks, it is up to Georgie to wake the dragon and move him before the train arrives. Everyone is welcome, and the event is free. For more info, visit the Barnes & Noble website at barnesandnoble.com or call 781-273-3871. Do you want to see what the Burlington Players have been up to this summer? The Burlington Players presents I Hate Hamlet. In the play, a discontented TV actor, Andrew Rowley, has recently received the role of Hamlet to be performed in Central Park. He has no interest in the role, and it takes the help of a ghost to convince him to take the stage. He does so, though performs badly, in this comical take on Shakespeare's classic. The performance will be at the Park Playhouse at 1 Edgemere Avenue. Tickets are $17 to $20 for adults and $14 and $17 for students and seniors. You can purchase tickets by emailing the Burlington Players at tickets at burlingtonplayers.com or call 781-229-2649. Performances will be throughout the whole month of September, starting on the 9th. Other performances will be September 10th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th at 8 p.m. Finally, are you a truck lover? On Sunday, September 18th, the Burlington's annual Truck Day will return. The event will be held on the town common. Visit and climb on the trucks from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. There will also be a performance by the band Classic Tracks from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Finally, there will be fireworks at 7.30 p.m. Everyone is welcomed. The event is also free. For more info, visit the Burlington Rec Department at burlington.org or call 781-270-1695. This has been your community calendar. I'm Ian Castiola. Back to you in the studio. Well, one place where there's always a lot happening is the Senior Center. We go now to Council on Aging Director Marge McDonald with the latest senior news. Say goodbye to August with the movie Heart and Souls on Monday, August 29th. Starring Robert Downey Jr., Charles Grodin, and Kira Sedgwick, Heart and Souls is PG-13 and promises some laughs and a nice break from the hot weather. We begin September with a presentation on fall prevention by physical therapist Rudy Vargas from CARE One on Tuesday, September 6th at 10 a.m. He is presented here before and is very popular. Drinks and snacks will be provided. Wednesday the 7th is busy with the new New Orleans Jazz Band at noon, the Leahy Farmer's Market at 1, and an ice cream social with Bell Tone at 3 p.m. On Monday, September 12th, we have coffee hour with Officer Lynn Reynolds at 9 a.m., a Medicare open enrollment presentation at 1, 
and the first workshop of our Matter of Balance workshop, sponsored by Leahy Hospital, also at 1 p.m. On Tuesday the 13th at 10 a.m., Barbara Ullman of Senior Feet will be here to talk about foot care. And at 2 p.m. on the 14th, attorney Catherine Aloisi of the Law Office of Christian and Dolan will be talking about protecting your assets. Coming, on, coming up on October 4th, we will be having an Elder Protection Seminar. DA Marion Ryan will be here on hand along with Chief Michael Kent of the Burlington Police Department and representatives from Minuteman Senior Services and Rockland Bank. You will learn about different forms of elder abuse and ways to make sure you and your friends are safe especially from financial exploitation. The Leahy Hospital residents will be sponsoring a continental breakfast for it. If you are on a Medicare prescription drug or Advantage plan, you should be getting information by the end of September. So keep an eye for it and don't throw it away. Now, of course, the scammers seem to be several steps ahead of us. So if something doesn't look right, feel free to bring it to us or call your plan. Use a phone number you already have, not what is on the letter you receive. And of course, if you receive a phone call about Medicare re-enrollment, that is not a return call back from an issue you initiated, just hang up. It's most likely a scam. All initial correspondence for re-enrollment will be via mail. And no one will ever, ever ask you to pay for your insurance through gift cards of any kind. Nor will they ask you to wire money, even if you owe the money for some reason. Do not act quickly. Hang up and think about the conversation you just had. If you are at all uneasy, call one of your children, the police, or the COA outreachers before making any moves or sending money to anyone. On Sunday, September 25th, the staff of the Burlington Council on Aging will be walking in Boston in the Walk to End Alzheimer's. Our team, Burlington COA, would love to have more on our team. If you are interested in being part of Burlington COA, you can go to www.alzmass.org. You can register or donate from that website. That's all for now. I'm Marge McDonald, and I hope to see you at the Senior Center. Well, thank you, Marge. Uh, thank you also to Ian Cassiola for Community Calendar, Peter Brown for the weather, uh, B News reporters uh, Corey McNeil and Robert Paris, and uh, B News uh, News Director Rich Hosford. Uh, and thank you to you as well for joining us here at B News Weekly. Be sure and watch again next week.